This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The value of a commodity or the quantity of any other commodity for which it will exchange depends on the relative quantity of labor which is necessary for its production and not on the greater or less compensation which is paid for that labor. It has been observed by Adam Smith that the word value has two different meanings and sometimes expresses the utility of some particular object and sometimes the power of purchasing other goods which the possession of that object conveys. The one may be called value in use, the other value in exchange. The things, he continues, which have the greatest value in use, have frequently little or no value in exchange, and on the contrary, those which have the greatest value in exchange have little or no value in use. Water and air are abundantly useful. They are indeed indispensable to existence. Yet, under ordinary circumstances, nothing can be obtained in exchange for them. Gold, on the contrary, though of little use compared with air or water, will exchange for a great quantity of other goods. Utility, then, is not the measure of exchangeable value, although it is absolutely essential to it. If a commodity were in no way useful, in other words, if it could in no way contribute to our gratification, it would be destitute of exchangeable value, however scarce it might be, or whatever quantity of labor might be necessary to procure it. Possessing utility, commodities derive their exchangeable value from two sources, from their scarcity and from the quantity of labor required to obtain them. There are some commodities, the value of which is determined by their scarcity alone. No labor can increase the quantity of such goods, and therefore their value cannot be lowered by an increased supply. Some rare statues and pictures, scarce books and coins, wines of a peculiar quality which can be made only from grapes grown on a particular soil, of which there is a very limited quantity, are all of this description. Their value is wholly independent of the quantity of labor originally necessary to produce them, and varies with the varying wealth and inclinations of those who are desirous to possess them. These commodities, however, form a very small part of the mass of commodities daily exchanged in the market. By far the greatest part of those goods which are the objects of desire are procured by labor, and they may be multiplied, not in one country alone, but in many almost without any assignable limit, if we are disposed to bestow the labor necessary to obtain them. In speaking then of commodities, of their exchangeable value, and of the laws which regulate their relative prices, we mean always such commodities only as can be increased in quantity by the exertion of human industry, and on the production of which competition operates without restraint. In the early stages of society, the exchangeable value of these commodities, or the rule which determines how much of one shall be given in exchange for another, depends almost exclusively on the comparative quantity of labor expended on each. The real price of everything, says Adam Smith, what everything really costs to the man who wants to acquire it, is the toil and trouble of acquiring it. What everything is really worth to it, or the man who has acquired it, and who wants to dispose of it, or exchange it for something else, is the toil and trouble which it can save to himself, and which it can impose upon other people. Labor was the first price, the original purchase money that was paid for all things.